So this is where we've left off. We're able to see a visual representation of our API. If you're wondering what this is, this styling and where it comes from, it's actually the Swagger UI. If we go over to the Swagger website and then if we look under Tools, you can click Swagger UI and this should start looking familiar to it. Let's try this uh, live demo. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. Okay, so as you can see the styling and everything looks quite familiar to you and as you could see there it's something which you can actually download. So what has happened is uh, the guys that have put together the API platform have actually incorporated Swagger UI into it, which makes a nice touch and it makes it easy for us to actually um, visually see how our API works, what operations we have available to us, what resources, etc. And so how does it get the information? Where's the information coming from in order for it to display this? Well, it's coming from something called an open API document, which is a specification. We'll go to the site and actually that'll be able to tell you better than how I could describe it. So it says the open API specification defines a standard language agnostic interface to HTTP APIs, which allows both humans and computers to discover and understand the capabilities of the service without access to the source code, etc., etc., etc. So it's a standardization, a, f a standard way of formatting uh, API documentation in ways that all different systems can understand and can all understand it the same way. Back to the task in hand, and that is fetching and saving data. And so data providers and persisters are provided for Doctrine ORM and that's what we're going to use. So Doctrine ORM is an object relational mapper. What it does is it uses uh, objects to represent database tables, and so the properties on those objects uh, represent the fields in a database. And so by using annotations, we'll be able to go and mark up our manufacturer uh, class and actually tell Doctrine, okay, create me a manufacturer table with this, create a uh, auto-incrementing ID for this property here for the ID. The first thing we shall do is add a use statement at the top. So use doctrine RM mapping as ORM and then with one simple step we can actually mark this as an entity. Which is done like so. This manufacturer class has now become a doctrine entity with that one simple step. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar thing for each of the properties and we're going to tell Doctrine what kinds of fields uh, these are and how they should be created in the database. And so this first one is an ID. We don't need to give it any more information than that. This next one will be a generated value or an automatically generated value. And what Doctrine will do under the hood is it will figure out how it should generate this value. So um, because I'm using MySQL, I'll be using an auto-incrementing ID. If I was using Postgres or Oracle, um, it would automatically figure out, okay, I need to be creating a sequence here. So it's really quite clever. And then what we need to do is mark this as a column. And we're going to say that the type is integer. Next, we'll go and do the name. So I'm just going to drop this down here. And all I'm going to say here is column so at ORM column and I don't actually have to tell it the type because what it will do is it will read this see that it's a string and automatically create a varchar because I'm using my SQL. This next one is similar except I want it to hold slightly longer text so I shall say column so at ORM column but this time I'm going to say type equals text and then that will be able to hold more columns or more characters than the name field country code so I just want this to be a two character country code so what I'm going to do here is say column length equals two so it will create me a varchar type uh, column but the length will only be for two characters in fact it needs to be three characters nearly messed that up okay the next one is a date time interface the listed date and so what we're going to say here is column so at or and column and type this time equals date time 
Okay, and so that is all of our properties set up. Let's just slowly scroll down them from top to bottom. So here I'm creating an auto incrementing ID. So I need to add these three annotations, ID, generated value, which will uh, which will tell Doctrine to use auto incrementing IDs because I'm using my SQL, and then the type is integer. The next one, what it'll do is we're marking it as a column, as a database column, but it will see that I'm using a string here, so it'll automatically go and generate a varchar for me. Here I need slightly more characters, so I'm saying type equals text for the description, country code, this will be a string with a length of three characters, and then uh, listed date will be a type of date time. Next I need to generate the SQL which will create the manufacturer table in the database. I can do it with this command here. So php bin forward slash console doctrine migrations or doctrine colon migrations colon diff. What that will do is it will look at my entities so anything which is marked as an entity and so at the moment we only have one which is the manufacturer. It will also look at the database, see which what details are different between the two so it will read all the annotations and it will see in the database that we don't actually have this existing yet so it will just create the whole lot. And so if we go and run this Okay, so it took a while there because it needed to write a file. I'll show you where that file is. If we go up to uh, Migrations, which is underneath the project root, so uh, it will have created this file here, version, and it should say version followed by the date, and then it'll contain a load of SQL, which behind the scenes I've just tidied up a little bit, so let's inspect this. So we're saying ID, integer, auto incrementing, not null, uh, name, far chart, 255, not null. Description will be long text because we marked it as a text. Then country code, far chart 3, so we mark the length as 3. And then the listed date, which will be a date time. So we've generated the SQL, we now need to execute it. What we can do is we can run something similar to the last uh, command. So where we said doctrine migrations diff. So that performed a diff, wrote the SQL for us. Now we just need to say migrate. Okay, and it'll ask you this question, it'll say you're about to execute a migration in the database products API that could result in schema changes and data loss. It's the first time we've run this, we know we're not going to break anything, and so we're happy with everything. Go and run this, and so it says it's executed. If I go over to table plus now, and refresh this, Okay, so we see two new tables. I'll first look at manufacturer. So as you can see, we have an ID, name, description, country code. If we look at the uh, structure, everything is all there. This other field, this other table is doctrine migration versions. And so that is actually referring to the version files, i.e. the migration files. And it's saying which ones have been run and when they had been run also. And that way it keeps track of everything which has been created in the database when it has been created. So you can uh, run the schemas up like we've just done there. But if we need to roll back, it just keeps a um, it just keeps everything under version control. So everything can be done in the correct sequence if you need to go back and make changes. And now that we have all that in place, we're in a fairly good position to actually go and try and create a resource using our uh, little interface which the API platform provides for us here. So what we want to do is create a manufacturer resource. So we'll click on this one here and you'll see this information comes up. What we want to do is try it out. Okay, and then all we need to do is just change this JSON to actually use the um, values which we want to actually post, which we want to create in the database. So name we will say. Acme Core description, uh, so a description of what the manufacturer does, and actually paste that in there. Uh, country code, so we'll put USA, and listed date, I'm happy to just keep it as a date which has been auto generated for us there. I'll hit execute, and so it just uh, took a second there, but it's come back with this. And so we got an error, and it says, can't get a way to read property ID in class app entity manufacturer. So I think what that is telling me is that I need to actually create a getter for the ID property. So we'll do that now. Uh, getters ID. Okay, and so what all I've done there is just create a public get ID method in the manufacturer entity. 
and then what we'll do is we'll go and actually give this another try. Okay, so it seems to take a bit longer and it has worked this time. So 201 means that uh, a record has been created and it's come back with this information here. I noticed that the ID is two, so let's tell me that the first time that I ran this, it did create that record in the database and it was only actually when he was sending back uh, the response that it was unable to provide me with the information that I needed because there wasn't a public getter for the ID. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have a look at table plus and we'll go on uh, check out the data in there and so as you can see we've created two records for Acme Core. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete one of these okay because I only want the one and then we can actually go back to our uh, API tool our little interface here and we can retrieve uh, all of the manufacturers with this uh, endpoint here so this retrieves the collection of manufacturer resources if I click try it out uh, the collection page number, yep, yeah, we only have one record, so we'll not worry about pagination or anything like that at the moment. If I hit execute, okay, so we get a 200 response, and you should see all the information regarding um, our one and only manufacturer there. You may be looking at some of these bits here at context, at ID, at type. Basically, this is JSON LD format, and we'll touch on JSON LD in a later lesson, but uh, the short version for now is that it enables auto discoverability and ways of identifying certain resources in a standard kind of way. Finish off with one other thing, so as well as being able to retrieve all the manufacturers, you can also in, uh, retrieve them individually. So here we have an endpoint API, API manufacturers ID. If we click on this and we can actually enter the ID, so we know that our manufacturer has an ID of 1 and then click execute and so it should go and get us back uh, just a single record this time containing our one and only uh, manufacturer and so that has been how you uh, persist records to the database and how you can actually then um, send requests to your API in order to create records, how you can retrieve individual records and how you can retrieve a collection of records. What we're going to do in the next one is we'll actually create another entity which will be products that belong to the manufacturer and we can start looking at how relationships work with our API also. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.